Hey everyone, Dr. Frankie here with a really special video uh, for a couple of reasons. Well, I've got a really special knife to show you, but what you may immediately notice is the orientation of this video. Uh, I have finally purchased uh, a tripod or a, uh, an arm here that will allow me to film in a perfectly vertical position. Uh, a lot of people who've been watching my videos have been asking me to do that so that I can provide more accurate uh, size comparison. So here we are uh, with a new look, uh, same great channel. Uh, I'm going to be bringing you some great content over the next few weeks, have some great knives coming in to review for you guys. But what I wanted to start with today was uh, or were these three knives right here. Namely, I wanted to talk about my uh, Frank Fisher and Robert Carter knives, Talon. This was my very first, you know, majorly, majorly high dollar knife right here. Uh, I have actually recently sold this knife. This is the last video that you're going to see this knife in. Uh, it is going to be shipped out to its new owner this very afternoon. So I wanted to get it on camera one more time, but also talk about how uh, there is sort of a price point at which I think there's really no need to go beyond because you're getting really into the area of diminishing returns. This is a super, super special knife, but I think I learned my lesson uh, and my price cap is going to end up being somewhere in the $1,000 to $1,200 range for knives now. Just because I feel like I'm losing uh, a lot of value much beyond that. There are some amazing, amazing knives. So let's say goodbye to the Talon. Speaking of amazing knives at that price point, uh, this Gavco Shrunk Trasher with the green tie mascus, you know, this ended up only being in the $1,200 range. So really really happy with this one this is an absolutely stunning knife and is a very strong candidate for staying in the permanent collection super super special there another special knife that you can get for a pretty reasonable price was this robert carter and nick chuprin bbm um, this one came in around 700 dollars. so really really a sweet little knife here uh, at a much lower price point so i'm learning now where to find quality and not necessarily messing up the quantity of knives that I have. So without much further ado, the purpose of this video is actually to reveal this knife. This is a really, really special knife for me. This is the Brian Ty Tie Fighter. Now, this is my very first custom uh, Brian Ty knife. Uh, Brian Ty, as you know, is one of the most well-known uh, custom knife makers. He wins awards regularly for his design. He has a very characteristic look about his knives and you can immediately see that in the handle here. This ergonomically shaped handle screams Brian Tai. That is his design through and through. But what you may notice is that the blade is a little bit unique on this particular model and that's because this one has been hand ground by Sebastian Beringi of Borka Blades. So a little over a year ago, Brian Tai and Sebastian teamed up to make a series of Tie Fighters with specially ground blades, and this just happens to be one of them. I just managed to pick this one up from my good buddy uh, Matt Patton over at uh, Slice uh, Fine Knives. So go ahead and check out his uh, Instagram channel uh, at it's Slice underscore FK. Check out their website over there at SliceFK.com. They run a really nice uh, shop over there. They have a, uh, a jewelry shop that's associated with it that's uh, Cut Fine Jewelers that's written up here. And uh, they have Slice Fine Knives uh, as part of their sort of secondary business there. So super happy to promote him. He's a really nice guy, young guy like myself who's really into this business. And uh, he looks for some amazing knives and brings them out at very reasonable prices. So thank you, Matt for getting me connected with this knife. I had been looking at this for a couple of years. I always liked Thai knives, but I never really liked the uh, some of the grinds. Some of the compound grinds were a little bit much, uh, but this one is a perfect, perfect grind right here. So what do we have? Up front there is a 3.9 inch blade of RWL 34 steel. This is Damasteel's uh, sort of plain uh, steel that they produce. It's one of the steels that they use in their damascus steel patterns. Chemically similar to uh, CPM 154 in terms of the overall chemistry, but a really, really nice blade steel. Works just fine. I've not been disappointed by any knives uh, that are made out of that steel, and Brian Tai is well known to be using that steel, and he does a very good job with it. So 
Uh, having this blade ground by Sebastian himself is truly an honor. Um, this one is hollow ground. It's beautifully done. Look at that top swedge. And of course it's done with his very characteristic rock patterning. He put his uh, special logo there on the back. I believe Borco refers to uh, his mother's name, or it has something to do with his mother, and that's why he named it that. But this is an absolutely beautiful looking blade going on right there. Now it does have some thumb studs, which are in fact quite functional. You can flip it out like that. If you're feeling really zesty, you can get a good spidey flick going on. That's a little bit harder, but it will do it. So I do appreciate that they're at least functional. They're not just there for show. Uh, and they don't really get in the way of the cutting edge. There's no real cutting edge right here. So very well engineered there with those thumb studs. There's a little bit of jimping and a nice thumb ramp up top. So super, super useful blade. Uh, it's It's got a nice uh, shape to it with a lot of belly and a little flat area right here. I'm still trying to decide if there's a recurve going on there. There may be a very, very slight recurve going on uh, down to that uh, point right there. Moving back, this runs on Brian's very, very smooth pivot system. This has got to be one of the smoothest knives I've ever encountered. Uh, it just freely falls shut. You don't have to do anything, and it just falls closed. And, of course, the firing action is very nice. Uh, it is a flipper. It's a nice, well-rounded flipper tab. You can do that all day without any fatigue. Uh, and the button lock system is really growing on me. It reminds me a lot of the uh, Spyderco compression lock. Speaking of which, I'd like to introduce the Spyderco Paramilitary 2 back to the channel. This is going to start serving as a size reference knife. So let's go ahead and do that for the very first time here on the channel with the vertical orientation. We've got the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. Uh, let's go ahead and bring out... Oh, I hit my own camera. Look at it shaking there. Sorry about that. Got to get used to this new system, fellas. So here's the uh, Zero Tolerance 0392 BRNGLD. Uh, also a pretty big knife, but the, the uh, TIE Fighter definitely dwarfs it. Here we've got the 0055, also by ZT. That's coming in with a 3.75-inch blade right there. Here is the ZT0606. That's a 4-inch blade. Similar in overall profile uh, for the size there, if you've ever experienced one of those knives. Uh, I'll go ahead and bring out my uh, BBM again, show you how small this knife is comparatively. So a nice EDC size on that BBM. And then uh, I've got the Gavco Knives Trasher out here again to show you the relative sizes. So super happy to be bringing you guys some new features on the channel and of course some new knives. Um, you're going to see... Uh, I'm going to get a uh, pair of three in carbon fiber and S9DV. That'll be coming out a little bit later this season. And I'm going to use those two knives as sort of my go-to size reference knives so that everyone can be happy. Uh, and along with this orientation, I think that things are going to be going well for the channel. So I'm super happy to ha have this knife in hand. I'm super, super impressed. Let's talk about the handle for a minute here. A uh, beautifully 3D milled titanium handle done by Brian Ty. He is really well known for his CNC work uh, and the beautiful patterns that he can bring to these knives. Uh, just super, super nice. You can feel the steps. Uh, you can feel uh, how beautifully rounded everything is. There are no hot spots. Everything is smooth. Everything is chamfered. The backspacer here is uh, ribbed for my pleasure. There's a very large lanyard hole that's incorporated there. Uh, I haven't found out if this is carbon fiber or G10. I think it was said it was carbon fiber, but it looks a bit like G10. Maybe someone can enlighten me down below. Some of the things immediately that I like about this knife, the action is extremely smooth. The ergonomics are fantastic. That fits in my hand magically. Just locks right into that ergonomic handle designed by Brian Ty. Absolutely obsessed with the way that this blade looks. It is flawlessly done, satin finish, and it is hyper sharp. This thing will not need any sharpening anytime in the immediate future. Um, one thing I did have to do, I tightened the pivot ever so slightly right when I got it. It came a little bit off center, but right now it is perfectly dead center and super, super smooth. The pocket clip is extremely functional and rides super deep, so I'm looking forward to carrying this pretty regularly and then bringing you a final diagnosis one day. So thanks for watching, guys. Go ahead and click like and subscribe to my channel. I'm happy to bring you some new changes. Go follow me on Instagram at Dr. Frunky. And as always, guys, this is Dr. Frunky saying take care.